I'm Chad Reynolds with Bankshift.com and we're here at Airtex, manufacturer of every single replacement electric or mechanical fuel pump on the planet. We've got our YouTube sensation Richard over here. How are you, Richard? Great. <laughs> So everybody's been seeing you because you guys have done like 50 new fuel pump installation right. videos. They're showing people how to put one in their Silverado or their BMW or whatever it is that you've got fuel pumps for. And you've got them for virtually everything, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Where are they getting built or manufactured or put together or any of that stuff? Well, they're getting manufactured right here in Fairfield, Illinois. Okay. And uh, we have two manufacturing facilities here and then a warehousing facility. Wow. And how do we get to go and either break some stuff or find out how they put these together? <laughs> well, that's where you would meet up with our engineering department. It'd be Todd, Ryan, and Kurt, and they can tour you around the plant. Go introduce me. We need All to right. take care of that. <laughs> but how many electric fuel pumps, you know, part numbers do you have? I mean, is oh. tens be, of thousands? If you take the fact that we've got roughly 1,500 pump numbers, and there can be as many as 30 to 60 parts in an assembly, then that kind of gives wow. you a rough idea. We do our first piece layouts in here. They'll dimensional the parts to the blueprints just to make sure that we're all on track. Now everything they check they can't do with a caliper or a set of mics. Uh, depending on the complexity and the dimensional stability, they may need to use a coordinate measuring machine. Oh, is that one of the, the arms and it yeah. does the, yeah. Now in addition to these machines, we do keep all of our standard, what we call attribute gauges in here. We currently got over 10,000 of them that we keep. So an attribute gauge, in some cases, That'd could be, be a go-no-go no go gauge. Go-no-go no go gauge, yep. snap gauge, a pressure gauge, uh, for instance, to check pressure out in the shop floor. Most of these are just physical feature gauges. Wow, and you course, got a lot uh, of them. The key thing here is to keep them clean and calibrated. So yeah. every, every day we come in, the computer tells us which ones need to be calibrated that day. Critical dimensions are like the tubes that come out. Right. Because the fitting that fits onto this has an O-ring. Yeah, and, and this it's very is, precise. This is outside the fuel tank and could right. go to the outside, so this dimension is critical. What's the, what's the sort of timing of all of this? The robot loads the tool, Yeah. and then the tool will close up, Right. and then our plastic is injected into the mold just like a die cast die. Right. A hydraulic cylinder will force the sheared material that we've got staged into the die, and as it backs up, the screw turns and shears a new load of material. And it says total machine cycles. Does that mean how many parts it's ever made? Yeah. So 1.8, almost 1.9 million somethings have been right, made in here. Right, right, Wow. It's awesome, ain't it? It is awesome. <laughs> what injection molding machines do you have here? We've actually got 21. Okay. We run about four machines per person. Okay. And as soon as the dies come out of the the machines, when we're done with an order, they come right across the road here to our tool room. Ooh, this is a good spot. <laughs> Look at all the bridge ports. Yes, please. In today's crazy automated world and such, you know, it, it's anybody who still knows what a tool and die maker is thinks, well, there aren't hardly any of them out there anymore. But the truth of the matter is, even though this is an automated thing and it's used in, you know, injection molding and all of that, somebody still has to make that tool or design the tool or whatever and these guys are the ones that are still here doing it, it with old wooden toolboxes that look like something your grandfather would have yeah. too with all the cool you know stuff in it this place is neat but as we're standing here looking out across all this stuff these are cutting material into smaller manageable pieces to right. make individual parts in all of these cnc machining centers right and almost this entire end of the building is devoted to the internal, what we call, pumping section component. Okay. The key thing you got to remember in the pumping section is dimensional clearance. Right. In most cases, we're dealing with clearance in the half thousand range. Wow. So anything that gets out dimensionally, we got problems. Right. So in addition to all the different stocks we machine, we're trying to control the dimensions very, very tightly. Wow. Yeah, first stations are cutoff stations. Then we go into what we call a 16 station tombstone. And then we're going to rotate to each one of these individual stations. Because the collet that's holding the, the part does not move. And that's the whole key to holding dimensional stability. Once you grip the part, you never let go of it until you're done. That's a pretty trick little part. So everything, that machine, 
takes this from being that big pile of bar and makes it in here where every single surface in here, everyone you can see is precision machine. This is a progressive style die. You can see there's a lot of work that goes into the progression stages right. where you cut it so it'll allow it to shape the way you want it to shape and not rip the material. Right, because all of those curves, it, you're stretching and or shrinking the metal and you gotta control how and where it does that so it doesn't fatigue it. Exactly. So we make the fuel covers, we press the tower in this, we press the fitting right. and the tube into the tower. Then, then it brazes it. And then we put it through the furnace and it brazes it all together. And then what happens to them after they are done once, in? Once we get to this state, they go to plant one and we've got a plating operation. And that's where they get coated so that corrosion resistant exactly. and all of that. Yeah. Zinc dichromate. Right. You know, the, all of everything you're doing is designed to last 100, 200,000 miles or whatever, so the people aren't having to do this again every year. Now we have our heat treat department here, like our rocker arms, stuff that comes out of our stamping fab department. We'll actually heat treat them right here. Okay. Is it real hot right here? My burn my goatee? Okay. <laughs> but I want to look inside. Ooh, yeah. Now we're talking. Now that's a fire. <laughs> wow, we could cook up some good stuff right now. How hot is it in there? 1600. 1600 degrees. That'll cook a pizza in a hurry. This is our final assembly to make an electric fuel pump. It's not like an automated machine that, that you can set up and it just yeah. turn on and spit them out. I mean, these people have to be trained. Right. And and they know how these things go together right, so. Yeah, yeah every yeah. single one of these has to go through a test before it can go. That's just crazy. Yeah, most of them have multiple tests that they're going through. It depends on what the application is, whether we, what tests we do. Right. But it always does a, a flow at pressure test for lift in certain applications. Right. This station where Joyce is, Yeah. she's actually doing, you know, you can see, five different operations here all at once. Yeah. This unit is actually checking the check valve. Okay. See, it just kicked on. Yeah. It checks to make sure that there's not a check valve leak that you would notice in the car, which right. would lead to a hard start. After he clicks the button, it does that check. It buzzes the pump to make sure he had it, it had the uh, continuity there. And that he, when you did that check, it I saw checks, that. Yeah. Yep, it checks for full continuity all the way through the suite. So in other words, if you buy one of these and you put it in and your fuel gauge still doesn't work, it wasn't the sending unit. I mean, they're clearly assembling a different kind of mechanical pump, but it's going all the way through to actual packaging. Actually, the, uh, the reason we have several cells is so we build basically on demand. I, I keep about a two to three day inventory level. Right. So when we get a shop order, we build it. Right. So, you know, it's customer demand, we're right. on it. The worst case scenario is two days, three days before you've already got one built from scratch. Exactly, very good chance of it. Yeah, wow, that's cool. Now, is it true that you guys are the only company in the industry who's making replacement mechanical fuel pumps for you know the the 69 Camaros or the 74 Mustangs or whatever all our guys are used to seeing that's being made here in the United States. Is that correct? As of last year, we're the only domestic U.S. manufacturer of mechanical fuel pumps wow. to replace that. Okay, so we got a whole row of mechanical pumps. What are they building down here? Uh, we're building our S350 style. It's a zinc style casting. It's for the older model Chevy 350s. But this is a high performance pump, not just a oh, standard yeah. replacement. Yeah, I was saving this one for you. Oh, I like this a lot. We this have... will be the one I'm putting in my pocket. <laughs> That's the complete real deal right there. Now, do you pressure test every single one of them? Yes, sir. Every single one of these mechanical pumps gets tested yeah. before it goes. Before so it. when the monkey at home buys it, puts it on his car and says it don't work, it's his fault, right? 
I'd say yeah. Okay. What well, was your name again? Terry Austin. Because Terry said I tested I the said damn it's thing. good and it, you know, hey, don't be good. We tested it. See, if the guy at home puts one on and it don't work, we know it works right because Terry already tested it. You Every betcha. single one of them. <laughs> you betcha. Yeah, that's good. 19.8 pounds. That's three times the fuel pressure that a guy would have in a carbureted application that's using this pump. Yeah. Very and cool. And if he says it ain't no good, boy, then tell him to come back and see me. Okay, there you go. Come see Terry. He'll get you taken care of. He may put your finger in there with it, but we got other ones. I'll probably <laughs> put his head in there. <laughs> Any place that has lights and colors of police? Always a point of interest, right? Yes, absolutely. It means you're going to the right door. <laughs> We're right ahead. You're testing fuel pumps in here. Um, to determine durability? This and is strictly durability. Okay. Here. Right. What we're trying to replicate here is, uh, let's take passenger cars. Right. We say that a, a 1,000 hour test would be about equal to one year's driving for an okay. average driver. Or if you live in Los Angeles, like I do, approximately a month. <laughs> and if we want to get a little bit rougher on them, we shake them at the same time, shake and bake <laughs> unit. Really? So, so we can make you hot or cold and shake the holy hell out of you. Shaker unit on the bottom, Yeah. temperature unit on top, and if we actually want to run the pumps while we're doing that, then we can go ahead and bring the fuel in from the outside. Let me turn the line, the line on. Whoa! Dude, that's freaky! I know y'all are locking me in here, too. Okay, this is... It's really cool, but it's creepy. You can hear the ringing in your own ears, which I didn't realize was as loud in mine as it is. Now this is what we call a hemi-anechoic room. It's not fully anechoic. If it was, then the floor would also be isolated and insulated. But for what we do, it, it serves our purpose. And the idea here is we put the pump in the test cell. We've got the pickup microphone. We're trying to pick up audible differences down in the three to four decibel range. Ears ring, because it doesn't make sense. They, nothing should be this quiet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you saw us take the cool tour here in Fairfield, Illinois at Airtex. I gotta tell you, this place is impressive. Lots of fun toys to play with and a great group of people building awesome fuel pumps right here in America. And if you've got a vehicle that you want a fuel pump for, all you gotta do is go to fuelpumpu.com where they have literally hundreds of millions of applications that are addressed and you can find video on how to put your fuel pump in, all kinds of great stuff. They let us put together one, we took it home, and thank God they do double testing, because otherwise there's no telling whether the junk I put together would actually go in. <laughs>